Welcome back. Uh, now it's time for our panel, Gender Bias in AI, in collaboration with Women in Data Science Belgrade. The moderator of the panel is Maria Novakovic, uh, Program Director of Data Science Conference. Please, Maria, let's start. Thank you, Ivana. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure uh, to be the moderator of this panel, and uh, I would like to introduce, uh, introduce the panelists. Uh, so we have um, Siu Soon, who is the Global, Global Director of Data Science and Analytics at Gameloft. Siu, please join us here. Uh, our next panelist is uh, Ljubica Vujevic Boshkovic, who is a Product Manager to at Microsoft. Uh, and we have uh, Isidora Gatteric, Analytics Delivery Lead at Wireless Media Group, as well as the Women in Data Science uh, Ambassador um, here uh, in uh, Serbia. So Isidora, uh, first thank you for uh, bringing this idea to me <laughs> a few months ago. Uh, you and I would like to mention also uh, other uh, ambass with ambassadors here in Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, so, can you tell us uh, in the beginning just a few sentences about WITS? Sure. Uh, Women in Data Science in Belgrade actually started a few years ago. And in the past five years, we organized a few conferences and workshops. Uh, the aim idea of uh, the Women in Data Science Global uh, is to promote uh, all the women in AI, data science, data analy analytics uh, at the regional level. So in Belgrade, we have now five uh, ambassadors, and uh, we are planning to organize a conference and a few workshops next year. So we grew up a little bit, and uh, thank you for your invitation at this panel. So that's all. <laughs> thank you. I, I hope this is just the start of uh, the collaboration between uh, DST and uh, Women in Data Science. Uh, so, uh, yes, we can uh, start with the, with the panel. Um, I would like us to start with the uh, algorithmic bias, that just to unveil it, uh, let's say, and uh, see how can AI community uh, effectively identify and address unintentional bias at, uh, to start with uh, within uh, algorithms. So, um, what are your thoughts? Um, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, being here is a, a, a pleasure as well, and thanks for, for the invitation. Um, it is a, it's a big topic. Uh, you can talk about there's a bias in the algorithm when it's in the face of training, uh, because uh, a, a algorithm starts with past data, and there's always bias in the past data. And you can say there's bias in education, there's bias in career opportunities, uh, there's bias in the application as well. So it's a big topic. There are a lot of things that matters uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. Like it sometimes can even be um, at the life level. So when you re receive treatment and when you receive uh, uh, education. Um, on my side, I want to touch a little bit on the gaming side because I'm from that background. Uh, at, uh, I used to be at Blizzard and now at Gameloft. For, for video games, um, as you can imagine, uh, is a is an industry. Both the uh, practitioners, so the creations, are very heavily uh, male driven. So it's not male driven, but the ratio uh, is majority is uh, my my colleagues are male colleagues. There are more and more female contributors, and we have more and more female artists, uh, game developers coming as well. But still, the majority. In most of the gaming companies I see, of course, depends on the genre of the game, uh, 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 are male colleagues. And also, our players, depends on the game, uh, is, is very, very interesting. Uh, a lot of analysis that we do, we start with the first step of profiling our players. Profiling means find out who they are, how old they are, uh, what's the background, where, which country they come from. And um, this will not be new to you because we have a racing game like Asphalt 9 and Speak Storm, which is a new game. Male players are the majority for ra when it comes to racing game. And when it comes to puzzle game, uh, tycoon game, games that uh, uh, build things following storylines and so on and so on, 
uh, is more balanced, there are more female players. Um, but that is not to say in racing game we have female players that are very hardcore and they're, they're, they're having much more requirements on the features on, on, on our games and they, they, they're skill driven as well. Um, is this a problem? Is this because it's a bias? Is this something we want to change? Uh, we are constantly asking ourselves. Um, is, is something that do we want to provide exactly the same experience for everyone, or we want to adjust to just because you are in the gender segment, not because you are in a segment that you are a player, uh, you, are, you are a competitive player, or you are a player that you enjoy the moment, or you are the player you like the rewarding feeling. Um, so we're constantly debating that, and in our last uh, game, is also a racing game, Disney Space Storm, we actually remove the option to ask for your gender. So actually for me, today leading the data science and the analysis team, we cannot do analysis to find out, okay, female players in this game is behaving like that, male players like that, because we simply didn't ask. We simply don't have the data at all. Um, is this causing issues? Because people are asking, right? Um, we don't know, but is the thing that we are going to develop the game, follow the features like that, I think is one of the small example among all the uh, wide examples that we are making a first step to um, reduce a little bit of the bias in the very beginning. Yeah, so yeah. that's my take and my, my experience on that. For sure, it's really interesting that you remove that option. Uh, I think it's a, a step in a new direction. It is a tough yeah, decision. Of I course, guess. I can I can imagine how much back and forth it it went into that decision. So thank you for sharing that and well keep us updated uh, about uh, try out the game. Yeah, yeah, I, we will. <laughs> thank you, uh, Ljubica, What is your uh, your experience? So as a someone who previously worked as a data scientist and who is currently working as a product manager in a company which is building data analytics platform, I would always start from the data itself. Because uh, we are training our models, which are you know, our artificial intelligence uh, superpower for the future, but you are training on some data. And as much as the algorithms can be uh, very uh, mature and interesting and advanced, uh, this is the data that is fueling them. And if, if this data is biased, and if this data has underrepresented groups, or maybe it is based on some collection which was not well taught, uh, the algorithm and the output of that AI model will be biased itself. So I would also advise and uh, <laughs> try to be a thought leader in this data generation collection process. We are now talking about AI, about advancing models, but we need to be very cautious and careful about data collection and data management and understanding which data goes in which models. And this is the first step that we can ensure that at least, you know, we are fair at this very early part of the panel, and then we can tackle other challenges that come, you know, but by the later steps in the panel. But I think that the first one is very uh, inherently very important. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, garbage in, garbage out, yeah. you know yeah. what they say. So uh, what do you think about that problem? Well, uh, I totally agree about the data. In my industry, it's a little bit different mm -hmm. because I'm leading uh, mostly the project in telco industry, and we have data about gender. Uh, but uh, I cannot say that those data are biased and uh, that we actually have a good quality data <laughs> uh, right. to conclude yeah, that. Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, definitely the quality of the data is the most important topic if we want to discuss this further. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and so you, you mentioned that these like uh, critical uh, um, outcomes that can be in hiring and finance and uh, healthcare and how can we maybe tackle that to, to prevent uh, some, some issues for people that are not uh, represented in the data? Um, I, I can start with an example. I, I self-taught yeah. myself data science uh, okay. when there's no position wow, like okay. data scientist, right? Uh, Cosria is my go-to place. I, I, I'm still gratitude to them, uh, have the free content out there. And one of the first few lessons is starting with talking about bias. And you cannot have a model that without bias, yeah. well, without leveraging bias and learning exactly which part is biased towards so that you can make use of it. Um, 
so we are always kind of in this bias environment. And now uh, we're talking about uh, models that are advancing so much in just uh, five, six years. They're still training based on data that they collected in the past. Um, could there be some measures to, to try to guide it in a certain framework, not to make it too strict, but to make it following the framework that we hope for the future good. Uh, I can give you an example. If you type to uh, ask someone a very quick question uh, when you say male or female, right? Uh, when you think of doctor, they think of male. Yeah. And nurse, they think of female. female yeah. So this is naive examples that we all know. Um, and if you have a lot of text, um, um, papers, articles, novels, all the things you train for the chatbot or for a smart uh, you know, generative AI model, they, they are smart enough to capture that. Um, would you be able to align that before that, uh, before uh, you found out the bias is just too wide that making too uh, much of the bias itself and then make an impact to people who, who don't even know they're in this biased environment, right? And uh, I believe everyone here in the audience, you come to listen to this panel, you're aware of this issue and it's very hard to tackle. Um, I know institutes and also uh, open source uh, companies, non-profit ones, they are thinking about that for sure. Mm -hmm. They realize, uh, just a recent paper actually, I don't know if everyone following the news of OpenAI, uh, one of their uh, chief scientists, they, they start this uh, um, uh, small team a uh, few years ago, two year, one, two years ago, on super alignment, mm -hmm. is exactly tackling that. Because if there's no alignment, you just l let the model to learn the most of the bias in the past, which obviously gender is one of them, race is one of them, and many, many others. Um, so we rely on that, at least right now, because we are talking about this right now, I think is a, is a great moment, because this is awareness, and awareness mm -hmm. is always the first step of change. Um, whether we can completely get rid of it, I'm not sure, because yeah. I still remember my uh, first lesson in machine mm -hmm. learning. Um, I, I don't know, but I, I, I'm, because of this event and because we are talking about this, I think I remain personally optimistic towards the, the outcome of it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry I didn't answer the question no, how okay. we can fix the problem. <laughs> no, as you said, a, the first yeah. step is to talk about it and uh, it's great that uh, we are doing that right now and then we will uh, get to the next steps, I, I, I am sure. Um, and uh, so, Jubica, what do you think that uh, the next uh, steps can be to uh, enhance the diversity within AI development uh, teams? You, you did mention that you're seeing more women join, uh, uh, join your team. So uh, what do you think, how can we contribute to mitigating the, the bias in AI teams? Yeah, so I think that um, you know, inequality or underrepresented groups in AI developed team uh, are no different than in any other team. Mm -hmm. And uh, being that AI is a little bit a combination of computer science, math, these are like historically have been male dominated fields. So it is to some extent, you know, logical that maybe we to some extent uh, adhere and uh, inherit that kind of uh, underrepresentedness. However, AI is a very young, you know, data science is a term that exists, you know, what, couple of decades. Mm -hmm. AI is very new. Gen AI is super new. LLMs are, you know, <laughs> you know around the corner. We, they are published a couple months ago. And uh, I think that this is very advanced advancement it, when, when it comes to inequalities because now we have this new field that you can enter as a female, for example. Uh, and there are no obstacles for you to enter. If you have knowledge, it, it is fairly new. You can learn it and you can enter it. And because it is not as, you know, historically as it has been with the science or with the math or with engineering, uh, there is a certain awareness that is happening. There are certain policies that are in place and there are certain su support groups that can actually help you to enter the field. So I think that although we are to some extent inheriting these, you know, male dominating fields because, you know, the, this is the combination of it, I think that we are actually in a better position because this is the new thing, you know, no one knows anything about LLMs now. You know, we will build this technology in the next few decades. And if you want to enter, that this is your time. And actually being it's so new, you're in a very good advantage to 
enter very early, whether you are female, which is un underrepresented, or anyone else. And I think we can see that was happening also with the data science field, with data analyst field. I, I tend to see more, uh, for example, female colleagues there than in software engineering. So I think that this is a very good moment, and if you wanted to enter, you are in very good position because it is fairly new. I would also add that one of the very, very um, encouraging part uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, advancing uh, and, and equality in the teams are leaders in the group. So uh, wh when I see some leader, uh, for example, in AI or in the field that I'm interested in, which has, you know, similar background as I have, or maybe, you know, to some extent I can identify with her, I am much more encouraged that I can be the leader next day. So I think that you know, increasing number of leaders, increasing number of uh, women on senior leadership band is uh, very important and because then younger people and younger females can be encouraged that they can do it as well. And um, I know that when I was reading, uh, you know, when, when I was at a college, um, I read this book by Sheryl Sandberg, mm -hmm. and it was a super famous book uh, where she explained her challenges, etc. And although the book was very written and very well written and encouraging, uh, I remember that uh, I couldn't identify with her. You know, she finished, you know, I think Harvard University in the USA, totally different education background than I am. She had different opportunities, and although I felt, wow, this is amazing that she was able to achieve everything, I couldn't identify with her. But for example, when I see some senior leadership in my company, for example now, uh, with similar educational background as I am, with similar geography as, as, I, as I come from, I totally can identify with them. And this is super encouraging. And I think that also in AI, when we start seeing more and more women who are doing amazing job, and especially at senior leader, leadership band, I think that uh, Firstly, we will be encouraged to try out more and convinced that we can do it as well. And also, these women will create space for the new new faces. Yeah, I agree. And Isadora, that is what uh, women in data science community is actually doing. So uh, you can tell us a little bit more about the space that you're giving to uh, both young uh, AI leaders and the opportunity for them to, to learn from uh, people in senior roles. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, exactly, Women in Data Science uh, organization try to promote uh, C-level leaders at uh, the regional level. To be honest, we have a lot of challenges here in Serbia. <laughs> it's not so easy uh, because we don't have uh, a lot of C-level leaders in Serbia, and that's the regional problem. But I think that uh, that's actually the problem we need to take care of. And once when we uh, got the, the leaders, C-level uh, leaders, and uh, in, in that moment, we will, we actually, we will have the opportunity to promote it. Uh, 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 and what, what Lubica mentioned, you can identify only with the people who are similar to you, yeah. uh, and that's important. We have, as I told and mentioned, we have a lot of challenges, but we are trying to to do our best, and I hope we will, <laughs> we will do it. I'm sure you will, and you're already uh, doing a, a great job organizing the conference uh, a few months ago, and I'm sure you have great things planned for next year. Uh, so uh, uh, what do you think are the principles or uh, frameworks that can be implemented to systematically somehow uh, address the, and rectify, if, if possible, the, the gender bias in AI? I can maybe okay. share uh, one opinion about that. Yeah. Um, uh, as, as we started developing models, we had this uh, one or two metric of success, accuracy, uh, I don't remember, root mean square, mm -hmm. and it was like, my model really, really rocks if I am 99%. And this is super easy with the data science and with machine learning, it's, it's very rewarding. You literally have, after training your model, you have a uh, number how good you are. Uh, however, I think as we advance and as, as the field advances, as, as it matures, I think we will have uh, more these metrics, and these metrics are a great framework to actually ensure 
that we are also fair with the algorithms. For example, I can imagine that we, we will have in the future some fairness metric, you know. Your model needs to be, you know, good with the, your, I don't know, classification, but you also need to have decent fairness metric because that's the requirement if you want to ship your machine learning model into, into the production. Uh, it can be that your data needs to go through some compliance, you know, a framework and you need to be, I don't know, like compliant at some level if you want to ship it. And I think that um, uh, promoting that, that, that kind of metrics publicly and also um, promoting usage of, the, of these models is also up to us, up to audience and consumers. For example, if I don't see that your model or, or whatever in production is not fair or it's not uh, compliant with the, this kind of framework, I as a user can choose not to use you because you know that's against to my some policies, my personal ethics or whatever. And I think uh, it, it, it because we are very early in the process, this will form very soon. But I can imagine that in the future we have a bunch of metrics that are publicly advertised and that you need to you know adhere to them if you want to ship a relevant model. And this is also happening. A couple of years ago. I think like GDPR started really big, you know? And I think as we mature, uh, same th thing will happen with uh, ML models. We, even now we have these uh, methodologies of like counterfactual asking. For example, uh, there are certain investments in research areas where you can ask your model, what will you predi predict if uh, I give you some different input? For example, if my data set was now female dominated, what would be your prediction? Will it be fair? So I think that uh, research will be, we will heavily invest there. And uh, I think that also as like uh, business leaders need to be aware and need to integrate that in, in the processes. And we as users need to be very transparent that we really want to use that kind of products. Yeah. So you do maybe think that synthetic data is the path to a less biased uh, data, more ethical data? Yeah. Definitely, this is one of the important pillars, and uh, and what you mentioned, I think, is important to uh, also give people the the right to opt out. Yeah. So if you are not fair, you cannot prove you are fair. You 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 are more you know biased towards gender. Uh, gender, I I could choose to opt out. And on the other hand, you know, uh, I I want to use the um, analogy to privacy. Mm -hmm. So iOS introduced this very heavy privacy policy, and Google would follow. Um, it, it shift the customer's uh, mindset into, I actually, I would value privacy before I value personalization. Um, and this, um, so it's a big experiment, have no way back, it's already here. Uh, and they do find out it's actually, Apple did find out it's actually a good move for them to uh, advocate the uh, privacy first. And now if we just take gender or anything or race or anything that could be a bias or discriminated field there, that if you value that more, if you value the fairness, you know, we, we are the company with models that we trying to make it as fair as we can, trying to at least factor out some of the um, easily spotted bias out there, it actually cater to your future customers because your customers are already educated more and more. They are aware this issue exists, and they want to use product more. They want to play games that do not treat me different just because you gather some information from me in the very beginning. I want to enjoy the same experience as, one, uh, as everyone else. I want to have the choice at my hand, not that you already predefined for me based on the very tilted angled information that you gather from me. And, and people also change, you know? I have different playing styles, so I want to adapt. Um, those are the, the pillars we could put in place. And one of the big, pi bigger pillars is obviously, I think, the regulators. I don't know how many of you here in the audience are regulators um, from, from, from you know, uh, joint organization trying to establish some convention, some guidelines uh, similar to GDPR maybe in the future so that it can put uh, a bit of guidance to the general market because uh, in order to create a fairness, it's not, is, 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 is a, a huge effort just to start every individual company themselves, right? Um, if everyone trying to play fair in the market to play, provides uh, a product uh, address fairness, 
um, yeah, you, you also need to factor in that pillar into, into the framework. Yeah. yeah, so that's my take. Okay, thank you. Um, and Isidora, what do you think uh, the consequences are of uh, biased AI? Are they uh, reinforcing some uh, societal uh, inequalities? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure about that, that actually mm -hmm. data can affect uh, society uh, uh, inequalities. But uh, maybe the, the output and the outcomes could be problematic with the biased data. That's my opinion, but to be honest, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Are there any specific uh, case studies that uh, you know or examples that can uh, show us how uh, a bi bias in AI uh, uh, can affect people? Uh, not direct use case, uh, but well, I see, you, you know, I, I'm very interested every time I have the presentation, I'm interested in looking at the audience, uh, the distribution that I see. I see uh, uh, male colleagues here. I see mostly women are interested in this topic, which is great. And, uh, you know, it helps with the le women leaders, which is a major problem. There's more women working in different uh, areas, but we are lacking women leaders. And that's, that's uh, something I personally experienced to be very hard as the only Asia female senior leader in a gaming company, you know, is a, is a unique experience and a privilege, so I, I want to promote that as well. Uh, one of the book that I personally feel very impressed and learned a lot is called Invisible Women uh, by Caroline, I forget the last name. Um, but if you search, it's the only book yeah. addressing the topic. And these, I'm uh, just reading it at the moment. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, okay. <laughs> it's on my nightstand, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's just, well, as a w woman myself, uh, of course, I already have some personal experience of, uh, of you know, different things, scenarios that could be improved in the future. But reading that book uh, still opens a huge window for me to look into, okay, actually, this is also a bias, you know, and how can we change that? We start with education, awareness, talk to people about it, because um, sometimes people have the um, uh, preju uh, prejudice, not because they want to do, it's just they've always been like that, and when you start to ha take the opportunity to speak out and to share, they also shifted their minds because you need to believe people are open-minded and you need to believe people wish for the goodness. Um, so that's my, uh, it's not a use case, but I just yeah. want to mention this so that maybe, you know, with the audience here, we start to open more windows just by uh, uh, hearing that. Yeah. I, I would also add that I think a couple years ago I attended the, the Strata Data Conference and I have, uh, I've been listening one very interesting um, presentation from uh, like Master Carter Visa team mm -hmm. I, I can I can't remember and they were doing their machine learning model about uh, it was some kind of prediction who will return the loan or, or something related with the finance decisions whether they will borrow or pen penalize and they did like very good data diligence, they didn't include any gender or, or, and also it was very clean. However, it turned out that in the end, they detected bias in the model and they were investigating. It was not like easy, easy to find out. However, certain areas, because they were including zip code mm -hmm. and certain areas, they were actually proxy for, you know, race, you know, in, in certain areas, people, I don't know, of color, they, they, they were, you know, inherited, inhabited. And it turned out that although they did very good, you know, data diligence, uh, they actually created bias model because zip code was proxy for, for actually, you know, race. And I think this was an amazing example how actually building data machine learning model can, uh, uh, you know, affect this inequality and can actually even uh, make bias even bigger. Because now if this model is in production, you know, these people will be penalized because they live in some, you know, area and this is bad. And I think, imagine if we have some recruitment tool, uh, and I think there were some, you know, recruit Cases, recruitment yeah. tools, yeah, where they're built on the historical data. And for example, for male dominated field, they will obviously have uh, you know, gender bias. And I think that, uh, you know, with, with all these examples, we need to be very careful 
And when we are building, you know, next solutions, um, uh, I think that stakeholders and, and business leaders need to maybe, uh, uh, even at the beginning, while they are proving the, the you know, uh, that models they work, they need to prioritize models which have good transparency and observability. And I would even go, maybe this model is a little bit less precise, maybe they're, you know, they're less of a quality, but if they're transparent and observable enough, if you know that you know, this field affects in that way, and if you can explain it correctly, and with this explanation logic, you cannot find any you know, uh, basically bias there, I think this is the model that is safer to go with in the production than some fancy, super complicated model which you cannot you know, understand what it's doing, and maybe it has bias, although very hidden, but it has bias in the end. So I think, I think that examples definitely exist and that we need to be very, very careful. Yeah, Isidora, you had something. Yeah, to I just add. Uh, yeah. Uh, would like to add about education, especially in less development mm -hmm. uh, countries like our, and I think that actually people are aware of equality and inequality in uh, very development countries and at the colleges uh, where they can learn about that. But in less development countries, I think that uh, extremely important is to to actually promote uh, the, the problematic fields. Uh, of equality <laughs> in AI data science. So that, that was just yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so uh, what do you think, uh, given the uh, everything we, we talked about and the uh, evolving nature of AI technologies, of course, as Ljubica mentioned, I mean, LLMs, we're all talking about it and they're just a few months, few years since we uh, started talking about it. Uh, with the ongoing researches uh, and the best practices. Uh, what are some recommendations that are being explored to um, mitigate the, the, the gender bias, and not just gender bias, all the, all the biases, and um, how, how do we foster a more inclusive AI? It's is a good question, but it's also a tough question. <laughs> Again, every time when we start to address to the how part, it, yeah. it's hard, it's hard. Uh, am I going to deluge your, <laughs> dodge your, your question no, let again? Us know, let um, us know your thoughts. No, just uh, when, when I'm listening, uh, I start to think about uh, what nowadays in university they taught about AI and data mm -hmm. science. They start to open even bachelor uh, courses on data science and AI, which I feel, you know, sometimes the, the fundamental part is also important. Start with math, start with statistics, start with ethics, and that's super important. And if we talk more uh, advanced, when, when you have a PhD position, more advanced research topics in the field of AI, in the field of uh, mitigating those, all the different kind of bias out there, which the model is based on bias, um, is a very advanced topic. They don't have a solid answer yet, at least last time I checked it. Um, but I, I'm just so um, happy uh, to know that they opening up uh, tracks and they have a lot of funding for their tracks on explainable AI mm -hmm. and ethical AI. So those two bars are fundamental. Uh, if they, we can know how to explain the model, not just by simply look at if I use it or not, but by look at, you know, model is smart enough. They get information anyways in other, one, one single feature as in zip code, or combination of other features as in what kind of grocery you are doing, what time you go out, you know. It, it captures these patterns which ultimately lead to the bias that is less visible, less observable. Um, so the research there is working on that part, as long as we can make advancement in explainable AI, and also uh, building more towards what is defined, what is ethical AI, what is ethics in AI. Um, the, the problem is complicated. You cannot simplify it and generalize it to every single field. Gaming, maybe we are the last ones that are, how do I say, um, impacting lives, uh, talking about major social issues, but there are other fields that are ultimately important. Decide the ranking of you getting something, right? This is, uh, this is the part that, that I believe those two specializations, new specializations I see universities opening those tracks, um, 
I see those might be one of those future solutions to address the qu question. Yeah. yeah. Again, I dodged the question <laughs> by talking about other people are working on that, which, uh, which again, I believe uh, their directions. Yeah. yeah. I, I also agree that there are a lot of uh, stuff that can happen like systematically. For example, you, you mentioned funding these kind of uh, areas, which is very important. Uh, also uh, introducing you know, global leaders into putting some frameworks into action and everything. And I think this is very important that this systematically will happen as, as uh, market will dictate. However, I would like to maybe offer one perspective what we, I mean, I as an individual, you basically can do to, to improve this fairness and to reduce bias. And being we are speaking here about, like, we're focused m majority of, like, gender bias. I think that uh, it is very important to increase uh, number of, like, females in the field. And being, as I mentioned, this field is very, very young, I would advise that if anyone wants to, you know, do this job, go and apply for it. Believe me, you're prepared enough. <laughs> there are like tons of studies where women think that they're never prepared, and then, for example, male counterpart, they think they're pre over prepared. And you know, learn from your colleagues, learn from your male allies, and you know, go apply for that job. You are prepared. You will get it. You will do excellent job. Find also some female supporter, you know, a person that you can learn from, some mentor that can, you know, mentor, coach you and uh, help you with your career and help you to get to the leadership also levels. And I think that by increasing, you know, number of women in the field and by having them as a stakeholders, we will also affect this uh, bias and gender bias and other biases in the system. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for mentioning the, the bit about applying for that job because I could not uh, agree more uh, and I think it's important to, to vocalize it. Um, so uh, I think that this panel has been quite optimistic, uh, but my question to uh, all of you is, are you optimistic about the future and uh, the gender representation in AI technologies? I can start. Okay. <laughs> well, I am optimistic, okay. but uh, I think that that will be a slow process. I'm not sure that that will be a fast process, especially as I mentioned earlier in l less developed uh, regions. But I am optimistic. Yeah, I think that we will have equality in I don't know a few decades <laughs> from now in in field. Yeah. I think I am. I think I am. I, I want to make sure I am, so that's why I, I was thinking. Um, I think I am. I think I, I am lucky, and I am one of the beneficiaries of people realizing, okay, we, we want to promote more female leaders. I, I, I do have uh, mentors, either male mentors or female mentors, mm -hmm. and they, they are saying what you just said, <laughs> like, yeah, they, they, they encourage me. So I, I want to... Um, well, as an individual, of course, I want to pass this by uh, to, to all the other uh, female, female data scientists, data analysts who want to advance in, in their career. They can be specialists, experts, or they can be managers, leaders. Like, choose the path you like, you, you are happy with. Like, you, you don't need to, you know, change a lot, but there's always going to be a key position for you to play there. Um, and uh, we have a lot of, uh, uh, no, no hard feelings, uh, guys, <laughs> but we do have a lot of nice uh, traits and advantage, well, uh, advantages like uh, 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 compassion. So you can feel emotions, you can grasp emotions, and you are um, more patient, and you are also learning and listening and digesting. So you are transferring others' advantages into your own. So you are, you know, those are all, I can talk more and more, and of course there will be male uh, leaders who have exactly the same traits, and there are articles talking about that. Mm -hmm. Some great leaders that always have some of the, well, now I'm using quotes like mm -hmm. female uh, traits and male traits. Um, but this is something we cannot avoid talking about. They exist right now, till today, right? Um, so, so to me, is optimistic, and uh, yeah. I, I, I cannot wait for us to have similar panels 
in five years, in 10 years, and I will see everyone sitting there, mm -hmm. and some of you would ask questions that, you know what, I was there five years ago, and I listened <laughs> to your talk, and now, you know, talk about your own story, and so on and so on, is, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, Thank look you. at the timeline like that, it will be, if we stretch the timeline, I, I'm always optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And Jovica, are yeah. you optimistic? <laughs> I'm, I'm very optimistic and I think that uh, these are very exciting times uh, with, with a lot of opportunities and that we really need to have, you know, also the right mindset to, to use them. And um, I don't think that this will be a comfortable process, mm -hmm. but um, growing is not comfortable, you know. If you go to the gym, you need to put some weight, you know, if you want to build a muscle. It, it's the same in the career. You need to go through some uncomfortable situations if you want to, you know, advance somewhere or if you want to change something, if you want to, you know, reduce the bias, you need to ask tough questions. So this is definitely not a comfortable process. But I think that uh, it is uh, very rewarding. And I'm very optimistic that, as, as you, you mentioned, as we, you know, um, you know, strengthen the timeline, we will have more and more leaders. But we need to be very intentional about it. And we need to, you know, uh, do these, all these proven techniques that can help us to get there. And I mentioned a few, you know, be there, you know, be in that position, sit around the table, put yourself up front, find a supporter. Also, I would like to, you know, upload, find the male allies, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're in a male-dominated field, find your male allies, you know. These can be, educate them about your issues or challenges. They can be super helpful. And uh, build your, you know, army, your support group. And then, you know, as the time goes, and because nothing, you know, wonderful is achieved very fast, but be tenacious. And in the end, I, I really think that amazing, amazing stuff can be achieved. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, everyone. If maybe someone has a question. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Go ahead. Maybe I'll just skip the mic. You got okay. <laughs> So hi, thank you for the talk. This is actually my first conference, my first job, uh, so my first everything. <laughs> um, I'm in the gaming company, and um, I actually think about bias as something necessary, but wait. <laughs> so when I look at building models and uh, looking at statistics, I want to look out for the bias because that's where I can learn. I don't really believe in removing the bias, like uh, removing the gender option or removing the, um, like uh, all the options, because you can really learn how different cohorts of people un are playing and also are struggling and you want to do better. So if you understand how they are struggling, you can actually take that opportunity to make it better for them. And removing all of that aspect in the beginning, for me, it makes me a worse employee and a worse game advisor. So um, my take on this is that um, regarding bias, I uh, need that bias to start. I don't want to finish with bias. Now that we know how tough that decision is. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of debate. Uh, exactly your point was mentioned. Uh, uh, I, I cannot agree more. Why? Because people come back to us later and say, hey, can you let us know what's the difference in player behavior of uh, female racers and male racers? And they were like, uh, but uh, we didn't track that, so we don't know. Um, we are confident in to make that step, uh, obviously for many, many other reasons as well. We want to make it shorter. We don't want people to finish many things until they start the game. Also, uh, we have a lot of uh, other games that we collect, a lot of data, as for nine, as for eight. They're all racing games. So we already learned a lot um, in that kind of useful bias for us to understand better why they're doing things differently. And gender is only one of the factor, right? Um, uh, so yeah, now we know it's a tough yeah. decision. Of now that I can is. go back to them and say, hey, you know what? Congratulations, you make a tough decision. There's always something you lose and something you gain. Yeah. yeah. 
but thanks for the, for the comment and it's great you you are here for for the first uh, job and uh, yeah first okay. conference i hope you like hopefully it hopefully many more conferences yes. and exactly. jobs to come <laughs> exactly <laughs> Hello, Ting. Hi. Uh, thank you, first of all, and then two quick ones. Um, first, okay, if there's bias in the data of millions of users, uh, that's like inherited, but then what happens if three people in OpenAI get around the table and they themselves conclude, okay, this should be biased, this shouldn't be biased, and then they change the model in that way? Is it also then human bias? That's the first one, the second one, are we ready to, um, I like to compare Europe and uh, and US, so they're, they have much less regularization and they're very driven for profit and then there's also always a question, okay, do we want to uh, make this thing actually good for humans, but then risk some of the profit in making this ethical in both in terms of gender and race uh, and, well, regularization. Uh, are we ready to, uh, to actually risk uh, losing some of these profits uh, short term to maybe making this technology actually good for people long term? So the first one is jumping in on the bias by humans, by few humans, and the second question was about uh, well, losing the profit in this regularization. Well, I can I can address the first one, and I think it, yeah, yeah, definitely, any human intervention would eventually introduce also a bias, and um, I don't think that we have a clear solution here because it must be iterative process. Uh, I think that if there is a you know sincere wish to improve stuff, and if you have human intervention. And then you end up with, you know, less biased model, let's say, but it's still biased or it's biased in some other way. I think this is better than just doing nothing. And then in the next iteration, you will also learn that, you know, maybe you introduce some other bias and then you're iter iteratively improving. And I think that uh, as, as we are, you know, rolling this stuff, we will also learn and maybe we will learn how to do it automatically. Um, I, I also think that a human bias is not the only one, and human intervention is not the only one that can fix bias models. There are mathematical uh, frameworks, mathematical algorithms and designs that can actually you know, pinpoint numbers how your uh, framework is doing. There, there is a wonderful f field of like causal inference where you can ask these counterfactual truths. What if, what if I change this field to female to male? Will, will it give me same success rate on the interview process? Or, or something like that. And I think, so, so yeah, the, the answer to your question, iterative process, I think it will happen and human bias is not necessarily bad. I don't think it's perfect because of course all, we are all biased to some extent, uh, but there are other math stuff that I personally maybe more believe to and because these are numbers and these are quantifiable. The second question is, just your recall? USA versus Europe. Oh, I, I yeah, recall. Yeah. Okay. It's the speed versus safety. If I can summarize I like that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Are we ready to yes. make that sacrifice for more ethical, uh, you know? Yeah. The question. <laughs> this is what drives, uh, drives uh, competition and advancement. So um, when there's someone aim for speed, there's always someone aim for safety. And they challenge each other towards a, a better good. Um, and obviously there's always also some special case that people only add for uh, speed to the extreme side and you know safety on, on the other uh, on the other end. Um, and I want to say that's not just US and Europe, there's other big players yeah. as well. That's why the structure right now in the world if you look at it and we are data science conference, but now we are going to look at the, the global uh, 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 powers, or you can say different uh, philosophies and system. Um, I think they, they constrain each other in a good way. That you always hear opinions or see systems, see directions from different uh, superpowers. 
and they complement each other. Um, I, I live in Europe, right? And oh, I hope the best for Europe, obviously. Um, and and you you do see that people are talking about that, and they are talking about uh, is our regulation keep us slower? Is is um, or keep us safer, keep our, our citizens safer because their data are more private, uh, well, they enjoy more privacy, they have more choices at their hand. Um, and, and again, I feel in the future, I, I, I still believe in this structure. I do not believe in, you know, let's just take one direction and let's all follow that direction. I, I feel that's the part that, that we already learned many, many times in the history, it wouldn't work in the end. You always need um, to have this triangle or square structure so they complement each other. And you would never be able to solve the speed versus safety problem, but you have the players there. Some are more focused on safety, some are more focused on speed, but they constrain each other because we are, um, yeah, you know, US companies are regulated in, in Europe as well, and European companies are otherwise vice versa. So, uh, yeah, that's my take as a, as a bit of the experience throughout the way, yeah. Thank you. And we have Hope that address thing, but great question. Yeah. And one more question. Thanks for the talk, first of all. <clears throat> um, for my question, I have to give a tiny bit of background. I worked in network engineering for a while, which is way, way more uh, male dominant than data um, for area. And I joined a team as a replacement for a woman who was, uh, she left, but it wasn't really uh, her decision in the end. And um, when I joined, like I immediately knew why she left. Like it was a terrible culture, it was very sexist, like my colleagues there, uh, yeah. and. I always felt like um, there's nothing I can do to help the whole situation. And you mentioned you worked um, at Blizzard before, which also had like, um, for me, when the whole Blizzard thing came out, I felt like we were only like two steps away from getting there in that company. And what can I, as a like um, male worker, not in a management position or anything, do to help the whole situation? Well, this is a good question, but I can say to you that actually I'm leading a full male team and they uh, are really supportive to me. So uh, I think that actually you as a person uh, uh, have power to promote uh, your ideas, <laughs> I had to say like that. So you need to be, in my opinion, the one who will uh, uh, highlight the importance of the female energy in one team, uh, female opinion and similar things. Yeah. So it's possible. I just want to add that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, yeah. uh, I think you're already on the right track because you already think about scale of impact. Uh, do note that uh, usually people have no impact. And when you talk about in each of us individual impact is re relative. It's always a little bit relatively small. But that's the power of us having the talk and, you know, educated topic, because then you encourage more people to do similar things. And even if it's small impact right now in the beginning, but join together is more. So I think you already, you know, think about a very good direction, which, uh, and also I can see you, have, you are a person with a great uh, uh, compassion and uh, yeah, empathy. So yeah, that's a, that's a really, really good. Yeah, I would also add, uh, thank you for this question, this is great. And as, as I mentioned, I think th it is very important to, you know, have male allies, and obviously you, you, you have the energy to, to be one of them. And from what I see from the male allies that, that I have encountered during my professional development, sometimes uh, women are maybe less prone to vocalize their achievements not to say brag about, but to be, you know, vocal and, and maybe, you know, claim that they did it something. And sometimes actually uh, male colleagues are the ones that they will call out, hey, you know, this girl did awesome job there. And it is so encouraging. 
and it is something that anyone can do when, when they notice that someone maybe is more quiet in the room or maybe you notice that someone wanted to say something and it is interrupted it is also the pattern that we often see you know in, in yeah. male female uh, situations and y you can you know raise your voice and say hey this girl wanted to say something can, can we give a five times, five minutes time. So I think these, these seem like a small, you know, uh, small deeds, but they can make very big impact uh, if you practice them regularly. Do a small experiment. Ask ChatGPT, give you 10 <laughs> tips <laughs> how you can do that. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, Isidora, Ljubica, and see you for this uh, insightful conversation. And... Uh, Enjoy the lunch break now. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're such a great audience. <laughs> yeah, great.